Hi, I'm Dr. Allison Schumann, Chair of Pediatrics at Community Memorial Hospital, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about some of the more common questions that parents have regarding fever. So, uh, a common thing that I get in my office uh, and in the hospital are parents concerned about what fever is too much fever and when do I need to be worried. Um, this is a really common concern and there are a lot of misconceptions about fever, not just amongst families, but also in the medical community. So let's start, what is a fever? So the definition of fever is actually higher than people typically expect. Uh, a lot of people think that anything over 98.6 is a fever and actually that's just an average normal temperature. So there are people who will run uh, a little bit lower than that or a little bit higher than that on average. So we don't actually consider that a child has a fever until their temperature is over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or if your thermometer is in Celsius, that would be 38 degrees Celsius. So anything less than that is actually a normal temperature. So now that we've defined what a fever is, when do we have to worry? So the truth is you never have to worry about what level of fever a child has because in a normal child with normal sweating mechanisms, the body will not make enough fever to ever cause any significant damage. The biggest concern parents usually have is that they've heard about fevers that come along with seizures or febrile seizures, and those can occur. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So why do we worry about fever? We worry about fever because we wonder what is causing a fever. Does your child have an ear infection, pneumonia, a urinary tract infection that we have to treat? So now that we've determined your child has fever, the question is, what do we do about it? Well, there are a lot of things you can do. Because we know that fever in and of itself is actually the body's natural reaction to infection, that's part of what your body does to fight off the virus or bacteria that's making you sick. You can choose to not do anything about it. You can let your child have a fever, and I specifically tell my patients that if your child is sleeping and comfortable and you notice that they're warm, you don't have to wake them up to give them medication. Now that we know that fever itself isn't causing any damage, that it's your body's natural reaction, you can let your child just sleep and get the rest they need. But of course, if your child's uncomfortable and they're fussy, which often happens with fever, we all know how bad it feels to be sick, you can treat them with either over-the-counter ibuprofen or Tylenol, and their doses will depend on their age and their weight, and you can talk with your doctor about the appropriate dose for your child specifically. Now, when do we need to see a doctor? So it's very common, obviously we all know, kids get colds all the time. The average child will get between eight to 10 viral infections a year, so that's being sick almost the entire year. Do you need to run to the doctor every time they have a fever? And the answer is definitely no. Um, so if your child is at home and they have typical upper respiratory symptoms, a runny nose, a little bit of cough and some fever, even fevers of 102 or 103, but they're otherwise well, they're drinking, they're not having trouble breathing, um, they're urinating a normal amount, uh, and when they're not having fever, their activity level is relatively normal, you can sit at home and watch them treat the fever symptomatically and see how they do for two to three days. Typically after a fever persists more than three days, if it's not starting to improve, I'll tell my patients, please come in and see me so we can assess if there's something else we need to be doing. But if over the course of two to three days, your child's fever is improving on its own, there would be nothing else you need to do. There are some special circumstances in which we'd want you to see a doctor sooner, and let's talk about those. So a very specific instance would be in the very young infant, and by that I mean children who are less than two months of age. For children less than two months of age, because they don't have a strong immune system yet, sometimes they can have a very serious infection with bacteria that can be in the blood, in the urine, or in the spinal fluid, what we call meningitis, and all they'll show is a small fever, so even as low as just 100.4. So in children less than two months old, we do recommend if they have any fever at all, you get evaluated by your physician. Not because again, the fever is hurting them, but we want to try to figure out what's causing the fever. And because the things that can cause fever in that age group can be more serious, we want to see them right away. For our children over three months of age who are fully vaccinated, again, as we said, you can wait two to three days if your child's otherwise doing well. In a child who's unvaccinated, who's over three months of age, if their fever goes over 102 to 103, again, you'd want to be seen by your physician to make sure that there are no other infections we need to look for in the urine or in the blood. So at this point, let's talk about fever seizures. 
So in medicine, we call them febrile seizures. That may be a term you hear, you hear, but on the street, they're often called fever seizures. And those are seizures that it can occur when a child has a fever. Uh, a common misconception is that those seizures occur based on how high a fever is. And that's often why parents worry about how high a child's fever is. Is that fever going to cause brain damage? So let's uh, deal with that in two different ways. First, fever seizures are actually caused by how quickly a temperature goes up and not necessarily how high the fever gets. So again, having a fever of 104 doesn't mean your child's going to have a seizure. It really is how quickly do they get to that temperature. More important than that to know is that febrile seizures are very well known to not be dangerous seizures. And, and we can deal with that in a number of ways. Uh, number one, not dangerous in terms of brain damage. As long as any seizure lasts less than 15 minutes, we don't expect any significant or any permanent brain damage to occur. And most febrile seizures will last less than one minute. Uh, another concern parents have is, are these febrile seizures something that gives my child a risk later in life for epilepsy or permanent seizures? And the answer with a simple febrile seizure is no. What do I mean by a simple febrile seizure? Simple febrile seizures are seizures that come with fever, they last less than 15 minutes. They're what we call a generalized seizure, meaning it's the whole body shaking. And afterwards, while the child may be sleepy, which is normal after a seizure, they don't have any permanent disability, meaning they don't wake up with any paralysis uh, or any other symptoms. Uh, that definition in the setting of an otherwise normal child, so a child who may have asthma or ear infections, but not a child who has a known seizure disorder or known developmental issues, leaves a child at no greater risk for long-term epilepsy than anybody else in the population. And in fact, we know that these children don't actually need any studies to evaluate their seizures beyond what we would do to look at the fever itself. So if a child comes in with a febrile seizure, we do our exam and we find that they have an ear infection, all we need to do is treat the ear infection. They don't need EEGs, which is the test to look at electricity in the brain. They don't need a CAT scan. And as long as it's an older child, they don't need any spinal fluid or other testing done. Um, so I hope this answers some questions about fevers. Uh, I hope it will allay some of your fears in the future. Uh, fever can actually be a good thing to help fight off infection. Uh, that the fever itself that your child has is not doing them any damage. Um, and outside of that special exception of a child who can't sweat, uh, which is a very rare, rare uh, entity, uh, your body is not going to cause any damage to itself by creating a fever to fight off a virus. Thank you. Twice.com